I invite you to turn with me in your Bibles to Exodus chapter 20 and verses 1 through 3. As you know, we're going through the Ten Commandments. Last week, we had an introduction to the uh, Ten Commandments, and we talked about how it is God alone who can provide us with an objective standard that tells us what's right and what's wrong, what we should do and what we shouldn't do. And uh, it is uh, our great blessing to have, therefore, a rule and guide for our morals, our ethos. Uh, ethos coming from the Greek word, or ethos being the Greek word, I should say, for what is good. Uh, we are told what is good in the Ten Commandments. We remember that we ourselves are not capable of keeping the Ten Commandments perfectly until, of course, we enter into glory, until all the remnants of corruption are gone. But nonetheless, the Christian, the Ten Commandments are to act as a rule and guide for or a norm for our behavior. For the non-Christian, the Ten Commandments function to show us of our great need of Christ. We see our lack of, uh, a lack of righteousness reflected in uh, these expressions of God's holiness and they drive us to Christ. And for nations, of course, they are the solid rock or the ground for all of our laws. There should never be a nation that says it's okay to murder or to steal to lie, to perjure oneself in, in uh, court, for instance, uh, or, uh, dare I say it, to, uh, to ignore the Lord's day. But before we turn to the word of the Lord, let us go to the Lord of the word and let us ask for his help. Please join me. Oh, sovereign Lord, we pray now that as we read this, the beginning of your Ten Commandments and the First Commandment, that you would be the light of our minds and that you would help me. I need your strength, Lord. I need your strength. 